Oh, hey, man. Well, I don't know if I want to ask, but, um, what are you doing? Oh, that, um, art references. You know, it's, uh, I want to get the proportions right when I, you know, I do a drawing. There's like a, there's a maid cafe comic I'm making, so, yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not judging, but um, you don't have to do that. Because Clip Studio Paint offers amazing 3D software packages, so now you don't have to pose like an idiot just like that guy. Which we're going to get into right after this, and hopefully you're going to be able to learn something. Also, don't ask me where I got the maid dress. Please don't. Well, hello there, this is Tamil, and let's just get into this. It's gonna be a tutorial about Clip Studio Paint 3D models and how to pose them. And the first thing that you want is tool property. The next thing that you wanna do is go into the window again, material, and you can just click on any of this. But in general, what you wanna find is the pose. And if you can't find the section that I'm going to use, you can just go into all materials, 3D, and then here you're going to find body type and pose. Just to start with, you're going to have four basic models that Clip Studio Paint is going to provide you. Two male and two female. And obviously the question that you probably ask is what is the difference? Well, one of them is going to be a little bit more realistic than the other one. In order to use it, just drag and drop it on your canvas. Let's do that with the male model and it's going to be appearing on our canvas. And as you can see in the layer panel, we're going to have the different layers separated just for this 3D model. We can also drop the other male model that is more realistic. And as you can see, they're both placed in the same scene and they're a little bit far apart from each other because it's actually trying to use the perspective. And if you're going to have multiple characters in your scene just like this, this is usually the best way to do it. But if you want, you can just create a new layer and then drop it again and it's going to be in a different uh, separate layer. Keep in mind that if you want to manipulate the models, what you want to use is the operation tool. If you have, for example, a brush or anything else, it's not going to be able to affect the models in the scene. If you want to just get started and get into it, you can just click on the model. And then here you're going to find the balls. And these are the balls of destiny. They're going to let you move the character around the scene. And the best part is, is that you don't have to move each part of the body separately because that is also an option if you want to move just one part so for example I want to use this part I can click on it and now I can bend it one by one which takes quite some time and that is why you use the balls to get into the general position and once you're happy with that usually what you want to do is click on the separate part and then you can start using these in order to fix your pose in the end there are three buttons right here that are going to let you use the camera in the 3d scene if you're going to click on the first one it's going to let you move the camera around just like this the second button is going to let you move the camera without rotating up down right left etc the third is also very important because it's going to let you zoom in or zoom out inside your scene if you don't want to use the buttons there's an easier way to do this if you have a mouse you can use the left click to move around middle click to move the camera without rotating and right click just to zoom in and zoom out. The first button is going to let you move the character up in the air and because we have the magnet on right here, it's going to try to snap to the floor as you move the character around. But it's not really efficient unless you want your character to float. The next button is going to make your character possessed and make it float just like this. If you're looking for a ghost scene or a horror, <laughs> horror scene, if you want to go back, you can also use Ctrl Z just like with a brush stroke. The next button is very useful. It's going to move your character left and right in case they're turning away 
to dialogue or pick something up or anything like that. So I think that button is very, very useful. The last button is one of the most useful ones because it's going to move your character around the scene and try to put it in perspective. And as you can see, you can move it around and make it closer and further for each position of any object in the scene. Where's my rent, Johnny? Where is it? Give me my rent money. Let's say you have a character just like this and you messed up, you want to put it back together without sacrificing anything else. You can see right here, revert model to default pose. So it's going to revert the model to default pose. If you want to reset the rotation, you're going to find it right here. Reset model rotation. There's also scale tool right here. And if you made the character too big or too small, you can go ahead and click reset model scale. These arrows right here are going to let you change between different objects within that 3D scene, which makes it easier. But I find it kind of more convenient just to click on the thing that I want to affect without using the arrows. Cool thing that CSP provides are camera angles. And this is going to affect the entire scene. These are presets that are going to let you choose from without fiddling with the camera too much. You can use this as a starting point, And then after that, you can adjust accordingly to your preferences. If you're lost your model and you want to go back, you can go right here, click on the model and see that there is a center object. If you click on center object, the camera is going to move right next to it and it's going to frame it just for you so you can keep working on your scene without any problems. Let's say if you have a very complicated pose, let's pose our character a little bit more like that. And let's say they're trying to, you know, do yoga, but a very complicated pose, just like that. Oh no, I'm hurt. Please help. What? Do you know how expensive it is to pay for audio files these days? I personally... <laughs> This is just a quick reminder that CSP models are there for reference and not for real life muscle adjustments. Therefore, if you want to create a realistic image, use this as a guide and not as a rule. But let's say I have this really complicated pose, but the floor is right here. And then I would have to click on the model and move it down, which is kind of annoying and takes time to fiddle around and find the ground level. If you don't want to do that, just click right here on the model find the place model on ground level and just like that it's going to find the closest point to the floor and it's going to stick that on the floor without too much trouble there's also a mirror button in case you want to flip the character the other way around and you want to mirror that pose a cool way to do this is probably if there's a character punching so let's just illustrate this in a quick way so let's say a character is punching with his mighty fist and they're flying right here and you want another character that's going to do the same thing then you can just duplicate the model put it on the other side and then just like that it's going to be facing it the other way and then you're going to have two models that are going to be fighting each other there's also a cool little feature that lets you lock joints in case you don't want to break the pose too much especially when you use these balls you can click on the joint and let's say I want to lock this shoulder. And right here you can find lock release, select joints. And that way there's going to be a small blue square. And if I try to move around, it's going to lock that joint as much as possible without moving everything else. This is especially useful if you're set on the entire pose, but you want to adjust it just a little bit with the balls, but you don't want to ruin it too much. Once you're done, you just click on the other button that is next to it and it's called release all locked joints. Let's say your character is a bodybuilder and they eat 5,000 burgers a day or they're trying to get really, really skinny to become the next, you know, Victoria's Secret model, whatever you want to do. Right here, you're going to find a cool feature that I think is really amazing, adjust body shape. Once you click on it, you're going to be able to change the shape of the character and I will show you how to actually save it if you want to use it repeatedly. In the middle, you're going to find a little plus sign that will let you change the proportions of your character. Let's say if I want to make it more skinnier, then I will go to the left. If I want to make the character a little bit more buff, I can go all the way to the top. And if I want someone who is a little bit more skinnier, but a little bit more muscly, I can go left top. Or I don't want muscles and I want more body fat, then I go bottom right. 
If you go all the way to the bottom, then it kind of simplifies the character into a bean, which is really cool if you're trying to get simple shapes without too many muscle uh, structure or adjustments. You can also change the height of your character. So if you want to make them a little bit more childlike or a little bit more taller, if you're trying to draw like a slender man or anything like that, it's pretty cool. I can also change individual parts. And if I want to make the shoulders a little bit more wide, I can go into the shoulders and I can just drag it around like this and I can make their hips very small if I really want to. And this will create a different shape for the character. To reset, we can obviously go in here and click initial body shape, but also we can save this as a material. If I want to use it again, go here, register material, and in here, you're going to specify what you want to call it. Let's say body builder triangle dude. And in here, you're going to find where you want to save it. Let's say I want to save it in downloads and I click OK. And right here, if you go to downloads, you're going to find that specific model that I just made. I can also apply that to different models. Let's say I want to do this one and I want to apply the same exact shape. And if I click on it, then it's going to change it to that specific shape. And as you can see, the models are a bit different because this model is the version one and this model is actually version two and version two and version one are going to have different proportion changes because it's not going to let you change some of the parts to make it more realistic. Let's go all the way to the top with this one. And if we click here and we go all the way to the top with this one, you can see that muscles are way different on each one. There is more structure and little details right here compared to right here. And that is the main difference between version one and version two for the models. If you're feeling really fancy, you can go into the character in materials and download these free models that Clip Studio Paint provides with clothes and things like that in order to study them and use them in your comic or whatever it might be. For saving, same goes for the poses. If I want to save the pose just like this, then I can go in here and I click register full pose as a material. I can save it and apply it to any character later down the line without thinking about it too much. The cool thing is that Clip Studio Paint already provides you with basic poses. Let's say I go into the pose entire body and right here I'm going to find different poses for each character. And, <laughs> and as you can see, he's kind of very shy and he's just trying to tell you, please be quiet or else. The thing that I want to warn you about is if you drop it, drag and drop, in anywhere else, it's going to add a separate model with that pose from Clip Studio Paint. And it's going to use a default pose that you set in your preferences. You can go to File, Preferences, and right here you're going to find 3D. And in here you're going to see default 3D figure. And out of here you can find whatever model that suits you for the default posing. Let's say this, I have this character, but I want to change his hand position without too much trouble because there's so many joints in there. If you zoom in, you can see that each joint is going to take me forever to move, especially with these tiny, tiny handles. It's going to be very, very time consuming. But an easier way to do this is actually go into the pose hand. And again, there's so many different poses that are going to be already preset for you. Let's just try and drag and drop it. And the thing is, if you do it just like this without selecting a hand, it's going to apply that to both hands. Let's control Z. And if I want to apply that just for this finger, I can click on it and I drop it. And now it's only going to be applied to that specific hand. And just like with poses, you can save hand gestures as well. Here, you're going to see a little arrow and the arrow will let us register left hand pose or right hand pose as a separate material, which will show up in here if you're going to save that in that folder. And if you want some extra features, we can go into the tool property while we on the model. There's an outline width, which will let us change the outline of the character. There's also apply light source. This will let us make the character without any light. This can be used as a reference and you can move the light if you click on the ball and just drag it around. You can also change the directional light or ambient light of the character, but I don't use this too much personally because it actually changes way too much 
and I like to use the 3D models as a gesture reference and not so much as the color reference. Let's say you're finished with your poses and you want to lower the opacity in order to draw on top. And if you just do this, it's not actually going to let you do that. For the reason being, if you go into the tool property, display settings for editing, it's set to fast. Fast is made for editing the image. If you want to set it to normal, then the quality will change a little bit and it will let you do the opacity on your layer without any restrictions. Another cool function is manga perspective. If you want to exaggerate and make your scene more dramatic, like he's pointing the finger at you for all the mistakes you've made, you can click here and you can play around with the settings. Whatever is closer to the camera, make it more bigger and exaggerate it just for the dramatic effect. Another cool thing to do hand poses is actually use the pose hand tool. If you just drag, it's going to make each finger open, open more, or clutch together just like a fist. You can lock each finger separately if you want to keep them at the same spot. There are also perspective tools within the camera. And if you don't know anything about cameras and how they work, I will try to simplify it for you just for this tutorial. If you click the gear icon, you can go into the camera and here you can find perspective. So the camera is usually consisted of long lens or shorter lens. The short lens is basically fish eye effect. Fish eye effect is going to make everything very dramatic and feel very, very far apart from each other, just like this. But if you want to make something more isometric, I had a tutorial about that as well on how to draw an isometric view. You go all the way down and now it's going to make it very, very like 2D game like and very flat looking. If you want to keep it at normal, probably it's good to just leave it at default, but I like to play around with it depending on the scene. Now let's get into some secret sauce from Clip Studio Paint. I have this super stupid image that I took of myself during this tutorial and let's try to use it to start off with the pose. Let's go into file, then you go into import pose scanner image. This little prompt will tell you that you sent the image to the server of Clip Studio. It's going to scan it, then it's going to give you the information back. Let's click OK and pick the image that you got. And then here you're going to choose which model you want to use for this. Let's say I want to use the male one and I click OK. And now I'm going to have a very, very simplified version of that pose. It's not perfect, but it's definitely something that I can start with instead of trying to pose it from scratch. If you go over in here and you feel like this is not enough, you want more poses, you're too lazy to pose them, even then I can tell you this even a better option to do this. If you go to Clip Studio and Paint Materials, you're going to find that in the pose section, there's so many poses already done for you in different models and different props. There's even a samurai one who is rushing at you with a sword. There's so many poses that you can choose from. It's insane. I really hope this tutorial was useful. Please subscribe and like and comment in case you have any questions. I usually try to answer them if I have an answer to them. And uh, remember that this model is a reference and it's okay to use it. It's not cheating as long as you add to it and think of different ways to make it more alive and less stiff. Thank you for watching and always happy painting.